uh, thank you, Mayor Barkat, for all of your generosity and for inviting me uh, here today and for your dynamic leadership and, and vision. Um, there really is such an openness to work with New York City and to truly make um, our sister city partnership um, active. So I thank you. I also thank from uh, a few people from New York City, uh, um, Rabbi Kaplan and Michael Miller, who also brought me here. Uh, as was mentioned, I, my name is Jeannie Mulgrave, and I am the Commissioner of the Department for Youth and Community Development, and I'm delighted to be able to share my perspective on building sustainable cities. My agency, the Department of Youth and Community Development, administers funds uh, to community-based organizations, or NGOs, uh, that provide services for youth and families, and these include after-school literacy, workforce development, and services for homeless youth, among, among other programs. The term sustainability often brings to mind environmental issues, and I'm so pleased to be on this esteemed panel with some of the leading minds on that, on that topic. But there are also a host of factors that contribute uh, to a city's long-term sustainability, and New York City has made investments in many areas that are critical to maintaining our status as a world capital. First, uh, New York City is incredibly diverse, which is one of its greatest strengths uh, when we have a mayor that embraces that diversity, particularly through support of immigrants who enrich our culture and invigorate our city's economy. New York City also has made significant investments in infrastructure, such as tunnels, bridges, schools, and police training facilities, even in these tough economic times. The importance of establishing family supports cannot be overstated. Cities can only continue to attract a talented workforce if they offer amenities that are attractive to families, such as strong educational and cultural institutions. And of course, cities need to think about ways to innovate, to test new ideas, whether in technology, the environment, or education. We could discuss any one of these factors at length, but today I'm going to focus on my area of expertise, which is youth and community services. Over the last century, we've expanded our concept of what constitutes a strong family. But one thing has not changed, and that is that every family needs community support in order to thrive. And at DYCD, we adhere to four guiding principles to ensure we're funding high-quality, sustainable programs for youth and families. They are using data, a commitment to evaluation, supporting nonprofits, and community engagement. The first pr principle that I want to discuss is the use of data, and Mayor Bloomberg has really made this um, a hallmark of his administration in terms of making policy decisions, and we take that mandate very, very seriously. Our data-driven approach reflects our commitment to ensuring equity and transparency in our decision-making process. It also helps us to de determine the best places to invest finite city resources. New York City has a growing population of 8.4 million and one that is changing at a rapid pace. Approximately two-thirds of the city's population is either foreign-born or the children of foreign-born parents. And in order to determine the best way to serve our citizens, we must first understand who they are. New York's Department of City Planning has done a tremendous amount of work in this area over the last decade, and thanks to their research, we now have an understanding who are, the who are the largest immigrant populations, and they are Dominican and Chinese, which are the fastest growing populations, Ecuadorian and Mexican, and where in New York City are they settling? By studying these groups, we can identify their social service needs based on educational background, language skills, and other factors. For each of our program areas, we use social, economic, health, and demographic data to identify high need areas that correspond to the target populations of the programs that we are funding. We're especially interested in looking at the following variables, youth population, public school enrollments, low income individuals, the number of foreign born individuals, educational attainment, labor force participation, English language proficiency, health statistics, and risk factors for youth. For example, using these factors, we identified 58 high-need neighborhoods while planning for our citywide out-of-school time or after-school initiative. And we subsequently located approximately two-thirds of our 550 programs in these neighborhoods. It just makes sense for us. We also collect data internally to track the progress of our programs. Perhaps our most significant accountability measure 
is our online data management system known as DYCD Online. And this is used in many of our initiatives. This system allows programs to track attendance and participation for all of the young people in our programs. And at any given moment, we know who participates in a program, how often they attend, and which activities they're participating in. We also know what language they speak at home, and this, this is important because we have over 200 languages uh, spoken in New York. We also know things like food allergies. DYCD Online not only allows us to monitor quality, it also allows our providers to assess themselves and identify areas for improvement. My agency's second guiding principle is a commitment to evaluation. After we've crunched the data and targeted our services, it's, a, it's critical to determine the effectiveness of those services. For many of our initiatives, we engage outside consultants to provide an unbiased view. In our external evaluation of our after-school program, we gather feedback on three different levels, looking at the system as a whole, looking at individual programs, and looking at individual participants. We're especially focused on what consumers think our most valuable feedback comes from parents, children, and service providers. Here's a snapshot of what our evaluation has found. Participation is strong, with more than 80% of elementary school students attending five days a week. Program staff are highly qualified, with 86% uh, having a four-year degree. Parent satisfaction is very high, with over 80% of parents rating their programs as excellent or very good and youth and OST programs report high levels of academic motivation. These types of findings help us to show that our programs are a good investment. They help us to make the case for new and continued funding, even or especially in a bad economy. We also conduct ongoing evaluation internally through our team of contract managers, and the staff members perform regular site visits and provide technical assistance. We hope that they become coaches and not auditors. Most importantly, we are willing to act on the findings of both internal and external evaluation, and we've made several adjustments in our programs based on that feedback. <coughs> For example, we learned that we had some challenges recruiting and retaining older youth, and we modified our high school program accordingly. We also do performance-based uh, contracting, which um, ties a percentage of the funding to uh, programs meeting their performance targets, such as enrollment and attendance. As a funding agency, we're only as strong as our nonprofit providers, and so we use capacity building to help build uh, these programs accordingly. They provide support for inf infrastructure, professional development, and help bring new vendors into the funding pipeline. Specifically, our technical assistance helps build the board of directors, develop and implement strategic plans, helps them raise and manage funds, helps them monitor and evaluate organizational effectiveness. Our professional development works with frontline workers, supervisors, and agency directors through leadership and management training. I'm just going to skip, skip ahead a little bit. The last area that is critical is community engagement. Um, while capacity building focuses on the who of effective service delivery, equally important is the how. We heard that mentioned already today. Uh, DYCD uses a variety of ways to ensure that we are engaging the community in our decision making. One critically important strategy is the use of technology. Government resources should not be the best kept secret, and DYCD's website allows us to easily provide information to a wide audience. So whether you uh, want to download our solicitations or concept papers, or you want to search for a program that's closest to you by inputting your address or your zip code, or you want to apply for a summer job or other benefits, you can do so on our website. In addition, DYCD recently launched our own page on three popular social networking sites, MySpace, Facebook, and Twitter, making sure that we're doing our best to connect to young people. We also convened several advisory boards uh, for guidance and input. Community-specific neighborhood advisory boards are made up of civic-minded New Yorkers who are responsible for identifying the needs of their local communities. DYCD takes their findings into consideration when we allocate funding. We have a youth board and a youth council and an interagency coordinating council that represents 21 of the city agencies that focus on youth and city government. 
Finally, we provide, we provide opportunities for ongoing feedback through market research surveys, focus groups, and public hearings, making sure that we uh, get that necessary um, input from our stakeholders. In sum, uh, we have seen a tremendous growth as an agency and as a sector, and uh, we expect to be able to remain strong as long as we continue to use data, evaluation, capacity building, and community engagement. Thank you for the time to speak with you today, and I look forward to hearing your questions.